So, where are you from, from? You don't look Hispanic. Do you even speak Spanish? What kind of name is that really? Who watches your kids when you travel for work? You don't really need the big salary, I mean, you're married. Do you need to talk to a real decision maker before you get back to us? You've started making some assumptions based on those questions I just asked you. So what I'd like to do is take you on a journey. So take those questions and just set them aside for a second. And we're gonna take a walk in the woods because it's my favorite thing to do. And we're gonna explore two different scenarios today. So let's go to scenario number one. We're walking in the woods, our favorite woods, woods we know. And we're gonna encounter five very unique people. But they don't look like us, and they don't talk like us, and they do things differently than us. They think differently, they solve problems differently, and in this scenario, we're not gonna acknowledge them. They're not our neighbors. And it starts to get dark as we are walking in the woods and it's time to build a fire. And we know best, right? So we're gonna build our campfire our way, on our own, with our own, in our own way. Because that's what we've always done. And so we start to gather some wood and we start to gather some kindling, right? We clear the ground. We've done this before and we have just enough. We have just enough wood and just enough kindling. And we build just enough of a fire. And we know that while we're awake, that fire won't go out. And so we sit here measurably proud of ourselves with the fire we've built. But we're alone by this fire. And we know that while we're sleeping, at some point, this fire is going to burn out. These ashes are going to get cold. And it's going to get dark. And we're just going to leave. Because eventually, doesn't everybody leave? So let's go to scenario number two. We're gonna take a walk in the woods, our favorite woods, the woods we know well. And we encounter five unique people. They look different, they talk different, they think different, they solve problems differently. But this time, we acknowledge them. Hi, neighbor. And as we walk through these woods, and it gets dark, and we have to build a fire we say, hey, want to build a fire? And we think about who's got what talents. And we strategize. And we assign each other different tasks. And we collect way more wood. We clear a bigger piece of property. We have way more kindling. We assign each other tasks. So everybody's doing a little bit of everything. We actually put stones around the fire pit right? Safe for fire, because we know this, right? Smokey the Bear said so, right? And now we know that whether we're sleeping or we are awake, the fire doesn't have to go out. In fact, we built a sustainable fire. And now we light this fire, and it's not just enough. It's lit. No, it's brilliant. You can see it, right? We've built the logs in such a way that we've done the Lincoln log style. It's a tower. You can see it. It's on fire. The front half of our bodies are warm. Our cheeks are red and toasty. And we're not alone. We're talking to each other. We're having great conversations. 
And you know someone started singing, right? We all start singing around a campfire and we're eating and we're drinking and we've built community and we belong and we feel safe. We just built an ecosystem fire. So how did we do it? How did we build this fire? Like literally. So let's go to my favorite tool, the fire triangle. I learned it when I was little and I love it, right? It's a triangle, it's three sides. You need oxygen, you need heat or spark, and you need fuel, which you're gonna burn. What if we apply this triangle to ourselves and how we solve problems? What if we have this innovation triangle inside of us? And what if our three sides were what brings us life? What are we passionate about? And what we do for other people? Now what if we apply this innovation triangle that we carry to the world outside of us? And what if we apply it to how we solve problems and how we create solutions? Because we all need solutions everywhere. We need solutions in our homes, in our relationships. We need solutions in our schools. We need solutions in our government. We need solutions in our businesses, in our boardrooms. We need solutions in our communities, in our ecosystems. In the work I see every day, I see problem solvers, innovators, that get passed by like those people in the woods and passed over from being seen, being heard, being mentored, being taught, being funded, whose ideas and solutions never see the light of day because they look different from us or they come from different backgrounds as us or they think differently than we do. In fact, I hear this phrase, from people all the time. I've bootstrapped my business, you can too. Except that phrase implies that we all have shoes and that they're all boots. But I also see every day in my work a different side of our ecosystem. One in which a woman can fight to bring forth the science of human breast milk, no matter how uncomfortable it makes a room full of male investors and male businessmen, because the stem cells inside of human breast milk can save lives, literally. Or that woman serial entrepreneur who has co-founded a fashion tech company and is literally going to remove tons, tons of clothing out of landfills and create virtual try-ons and 3D garments and who can raise $1.5 million in eight hours. And yes, she's on the patents herself. Or how about the three international students who have discovered here in Nashville that there's an educational gap for chronically diseased children in hospitals here in Nashville. And they took their idea global. They placed third out of a thousand teams around the world. And they're coming back this semester, their college students here, to keep researching it and trying to solve it. Real people, real problems, real solutions right here in our world, in our woods. So I've lost two jobs in mergers. One on the assumption that I wouldn't move to another city. I was never asked if I would. I lost another in the acquisition because they chose to go with the other person in the position. Even though I built the original fire in that set of woods. I didn't look or talk or think like the new people in charge. So they passed me by. I survived a separation agreement. 
A separation agreement is where you and the company acknowledge that you are very, very good at what you do. You're spectacular, but you don't think or act or make decisions like the people in charge. So you mutually agree that they will pass you by. I have survived sexual harassment and hostile work environments. I have been passed over for opportunities because I was too young and I was in my 40s. I have been passed over because I was overqualified, which by definition, by the way, is not a thing. I have survived sexual battery and assault. I have survived homelessness only to be asked, what did you do to find yourself or deserve that situation? How do we begin to see the value of differences as assets to solving problems? How do we start to see as differences as values in our neighbors in the woods that we share and walk through every day? Because I'm one of the people that you frequently pass every day. And I am different. I'm a woman, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm Latina, I'm multilingual, I'm tall, I'm strong, I'm a first gen, both American and college student. I'm an innovation junkie, I love that stuff. How do we start to see everyone we live next to as having value for how to solve problems. Because when we do, that's inclusive innovation. And inclusive innovation is how we take value-added change and implement it to positively impact the human experience. Not for some humans, but for all humans. And all of us need solutions in our lives, in our relationships, in our schools, in our communities, in our businesses, in our boardrooms, in our cities, in our governments, in our ecosystems. But we make it difficult. We make it complex. It doesn't have to be. We just have to stop not valuing each other. Remember those questions I asked at the beginning and you all started making assumptions? The answer is, I have been asked all of those questions before, as recently as yesterday. It's time to stop. Look around you. Look at your neighbors. Look around you right here, right now. Do it. Look inside of you right here, right now? Are we asking ourselves the right questions? Are we building bigger, better, more brilliant fires? Or are we letting our collective fire die out? Thank you.